So hi guys, this is Karthik. In this video, I'm going to discuss six binary search problems that you can expect at any coding interview that you sit for. And I can almost guarantee that if you sit for 10 companies, then at least seven to eight will ask two, three binary search problems, which are exactly the same as these six problems, or if not exactly the same, very similar to these six problems. So watch till the end and I'm sure you'll gain something fruitful out of this video. Also spoiler, there are not going to be six problems in the part one, there will be only three and the next three will be in part two. So yeah, click bit infinity, but I'm sure that you will gain something out of this video and let's get started. Also take it for given that, take it by default that you have to read the problem on your own first and think of a solution only then follow what I am trying, how I am trying to solve it. So here's the first question. We are given a sorted array of integers. The array is sorted in increasing order. So the array looks something like this. Is it, it, the elements going to the right increase. I want to find out the frequency of a given value X and this should be done in log n time. I can do it in big O of n time. I know we all can do it. So let's think of that first. So my array looks something like this. There are going to be some integers, some numbers, and finally X will appear. If it does exist in the array, there is a possibility that frequency equal to zero, but for now let's assume that it does exist. Then there will be some occurrences of X. In fact, all the occurrences are going to occur together because the array is sorted. So all X will come together. So we'll go have some X here and then there will be a final occurrence of this X. Okay. Then again, more integers that are greater than X and this will be what my array would look like. And I would like to find out this length of this particular sub array, which is entirely filled with X's because this length is going to be the frequency of X in my array. How can I find that in log n time? I can do it in big O of n time. It's simple that I could go from left to right. I could find the leftmost occurrence of X. I could go from right to left. I could find the rightmost occurrence of X. And then simply the frequency of X is going to be R minus L plus one. Voila, we did it. So it's big O of n time complexity, but yeah, the algorithm is running. We want to make uh, fire, improve this to log n time now. How can we do that? So is there a way I could find out L in log n time and also R in log n time? Well, of course there is a way and I could do use binary search to find L and R. I'm only going to discuss how I will be finding L using binary search. R will be symmetric and you can do that as your homework. So here is a, how I'm going to find out the leftmost occurrence of X in the array. And I know that the leftmost occurrence of X in the array is somewhere in the range zero to N minus one, or let's call it low to high. Right. I know that the leftmost occurrence of X is somewhere between these indices from low to high or zero to N minus one, because that's my entire array. The leftmost occurrence has to be somewhere in this range. And this is my search range. So I'm going to try out what is the value at mid. So I will try out a of mid mid equal to low, low plus high by two. So there are three possibilities. Okay. And let's discuss each of them. So a of mid might be greater than X. Since I'm trying to find out the first occurrence of uh, the first occurrence of X, then if a of mid is greater than X, my array is sorted in increasing order. So all the elements to the right of mid are definitely going to be greater than X. Since I'm trying to find X, I have to think about the search range that is to the left region, right? So I should up update my search range to low comma mid minus one. Because if there is any occurrence of X in the array, it has to be somewhere to the left since all the elements uh, to smaller than a mid are to the left of it. So this will be my new search range. If this was the condition at mid, how about a mid is greater than uh, a mid is less than X. So in this particular case, if a mid is less than X, what happens? I'm trying to find the first occurrence of X. Since a mid is less than X, I want an element that is greater than a mid definitely. So I will go to the right hand side and my search range will become mid, mid plus one to high because X cannot be at any element from zero to mid by, uh, to mid since all these elements are less than X. So my search range becomes mid plus one to high. And the last case. So I'm going to clear this up for the last case. That is the most important case where people make mistakes. How about a mid equal to X? Now there is a possibility that mid itself is the first occurrence of X in the array. So it will be equ mid equals to L or it is possible that it is not the first occurrence, but the second, third or the last occurrence of X in your array. So in this particular case, what you will do is that there, there is a possibility that mid is correct. The mid could be the leftmost uh, guy, but it may not be. So you cannot totally eliminate the possibility of mid being the leftmost guy. So you will say that my search range becomes low to mid. 
so you are giving an option to mid that in the future it might get a chance but any element or any occurrence of x that appears to the right can definitely not be the leftmost occurrence since x appears at mid so it does not matter if it appears to the right or not we are interested in finding l and guys that's it this is how you can find l in log n time similarly you can find r in log n time and you can print your answer as r minus l plus 1 this is an overall log n time guys that's it let's try the next problem now so let me get rid of this and here's the second problem you're given with an array that was initially sorted but someone had rotated at x times to the left so rotating left would mean that if your array in was initially 135 this is a sorted array you can rotate it once a circular left rotation or a circular left shift and your array would become 351 so hopefully you get the idea you can keep on rotating this particular array of n elements and now you're given after some x number of rotations you're given what the array looks like you want to tell what is the what was the number of times your initial array was rotated to get this particular array you can assume no duplicates exist also x is uh, z, x is in the range 0 to n minus 1 because if you rotate the array n times it will be the same as initial array so now what you need to do is you need to find out x so consider this particular example this initial array was 0 1 2 so until 7 and you rotate it once, 0 goes to the end. Rotate it twice, 1 also goes to the end. Rotate it again, 2 also goes to the end. And you will see that the answer here is 3 rotations have been done to this initial array to get this. And that should be your output. So now let's think how our array looks. Initially my array looked something like this. Because it was sorted in increasing order, there were no duplicates. So it's always an increasing function from left to right. After rotating it a few times, my array would look something like this. This is going to be an increasing part and then we'll have the smallest element and again an increasing part. Also this uh, this largest element of the second increasing part is smaller than the smallest element of this first increasing part. Uh, why is that so? You can verify it but that is the point here. It's quite simple to verify since this is the smallest element here. These are increasing till here and then your array is basically like this. Initially the array looked something like this. This portion was here you have just shifted it to the side so hopefully the idea is clear my array looks something like this after uh, some x number of rotations and how do i decide what x is so the number of elements in this portion the number of elements that have reached the end from the starting is basically the number of times your array was rotated and this is x all i need to do is i need to find out the number of elements in this second portion so if I were able to find out the index of this guy here or maybe the index of this guy here then I could easily determine how many elements are in this range because overall n elements and using some simple math formulas I will find out this thing but all I need is this particular index or this index. Let's think about this particular index. Is there something special about it? So the in, in the entire array in the entire array after you have rotated it x number of times if x equal to 0 that's simple all you need to do is you need to check if a0 is less than a n minus 1 if this thing is true then your array was never rotated okay you can verify this one also if you have any doubt you can ask me in comments of course also so if your array was rotated even once then your array looks something like this okay and you can easily see that there exists only one index idx at which a of index is greater than a of index plus 1 and that is this particular index this guy is greater than this guy and rest at any other index idx this property will not be followed they will be a index is less than a index plus 1 since this portion is entirely increasing so here this cannot be true that the next guy is smaller than the previous guy also this portion is also totally increasing so here also this property will never be followed there exists only one index at which a index is greater than a index plus one that means this guy is greater than the next guy that follows it all i need to find is this guy if i find out this particular per person the peak here then i could determine the index here that will be idx plus one and i could find out the number of elements here so i want to do a binary search to find this particular guy and i know there there exists only one such guy in the entire array if x is not zero if x is zero you can verify that now let's think how you can find this using binary search so here is my array and i'm assuming that my idx lies somewhere in the range low to high i try out the value mid and 
if a at mid is greater than a at mid plus one my work is done right then my work is done because mid equal to idx there is only one such index where this thing is true but if this is not true then the other possibility is that a of mid is in fact mm, yeah what if this thing is true that means a of mid is less than a of mid plus one then i could be anywhere right i could be somewhere in this range or i could be somewhere in this range since i want to reach here i if i'm in this particular range here then i would like to readjust my search range to mid plus one to high right if i'm in this region then i would like to readjust my search range to mid plus one to high since i want to go to the right hand side whereas if i'm in this range then i would readjust my search range to low comma mid minus one since i want to go backwards i want to find this guy now how do i decide in which of these two regions i currently am because in both of these th regions this particular property is obeyed right how do i find it so if i'm in this particular region i will be sure that the last element of the array this one will be smaller right since all these elements are definitely greater than all of them so a of mid will be greater than the last element of the array if this thing is true uh, meaning that i am in this region whereas if i am in this particular region then a of mid will be smaller than the last element of the array so based upon the last element of the array i could make my decision whether i am in this region or this region and since once i know which region i am currently in i could readjust my search range and i have a binary search solution that will run in log n time so we are done you have any doubts you can ask me in comments let's try the next problem so here is the next problem again you are given with an uh, initially sorted array then the array was so rotated x number of times now you don't want to find out how many times it was rotated but you would like to find a value target value whether that particular value exists in your array or not and say yes or no depending upon whether it exists in your array or not so for example if this was your array it became this and i tell you search whether 6 exists in the array or not you will say yes it does if i ask 10 exists in the array or not you will say no it does not and that is the problem so obviously a big of n solution is very simple simply iterate through the entire array and you are done but we want a log n time algorithm since we are doing a binary search video so think about how you can do this thing in log n time so again my array is going to look something like this if it was rotated even once my array will look something like this yeah i guess this is a better representation here and now what i can do is if i were able to find out this particular uh, region and this particular region i was able to find out the index here and yeah we know that in question number two we learned how we can find this particular index so if i can find this index out i could divide my array into two increasing arrays in fact right so if i'm able to find out index i will have two arrays from a0 to a idx So I'll have two arrays, one of them will be a0 to a index and the other one will be a index plus 1 to n minus 1, right. So I'll have these two arrays and both of them, uh, these have a special property that there are sort, these are sorted increasing arrays, right. So what I can do is in this particular region I can do a binary search and for the target value, same way for this particular region I could do a binary search for the target value, both of them are going to be log n in the worst time so it's overall we go of log n. So guys, hopefully this was a helpful video to you. In the next video, I'll bring three more interesting and comparatively harder problems. And if you like, uh, if you if you found the content helpful, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.